This is Lecture 1 for Class 4. When devising your research plan, you will need to select a starting point for each issue. If you happen to have a citation to a piece of primary law, or think you can identify a statute, regulation, or a case using an index or a keyword search in an appropriate database or book, it is always a good idea to start there. We have already seen how one piece of primary authority can lead you to another, and also how primary authority can point you to secondary authority, which will explain the law and help speed up the research process. This class we're going to learn about researching in statutory codes, but before we actually start the research, it's imperative that you understand how statutory codes are organized and what it is exactly that you are looking for. Both the federal and state governments publish an official version of their statutory codes, but there are also unofficial versions. At the federal level, the United States Code Annotated, published by West and available on Westlaw Next, is an unofficial code. This is the version of the U.S. Code we will use in class this semester. Another unofficial version is the United States Code Service, which you see in the middle of the screen here. The United States Code Service is published by Lexis, and it's available on Lexis Advance in online format. You'll learn how to use Lexis Advance later in the semester. The official version of the United States Code is pictured to the far left, and we've already spoken about the poor updating habits of the U.S. federal government in keeping the U.S. Code up to date. So we won't be using the U.S. Code in this class we'll be focusing on the unofficial versions of the United States Code. The United States Code is currently divided into 51 subject categories. The print versions of the unofficial codes are updated annually. The online versions of the U.S. Code Service and the U.S. Code Annotated are updated more frequently, and we looked at some of that updating material when we talked about citing to statutes online in class. The Hawaii Revised Statutes are also republished by West and Lexis. The West version, which you will also find on Westlaw Next, is called West Hawaii Revised Statutes Annotated. This is the version of the Hawaii Statutes that we will be using in class this semester. The Mickey's Hawaii Revised Statutes Annotated is published by Lexis and this version is on Lexis Advance in online format. On the upper right corner of your screen you'll see a representation of the official version of the Hawaii Revised Statutes. The official version, unlike its federal counterpart, is kept up to date annually through the use of a separately bound volume called a supplement. You see that pictured in white here. In addition, the Hawaii Revised Statutes provides research aids and is annotated, also a big difference from the federal official United States Code. The research aids and annotations in the official version are not nearly as extensive as what you would find in the unofficial version, so the unofficial versions remain a favorite of practitioners, both for their speed of publishing as well as their research aids. I want to note that the Hawaii Revised Statutes are available online for free from the government website. I want to caution you though because the online version is no more up to date than the print version that is sitting on the shelves. This is unlike Wes and Mickey's which update their statutes regularly in their online format. Codes exist in multiple formats. The printed version of the US Code and all of its variations is located in range 29 in the Law Library. The Hawaii Revised Statutes are located in the Hawaii Collection in the Law Library Lobby. If you use the print version and you look up a code section, you will always have to check the back of the book for updates. This update in the back of the book is called a pocket part and that's because it slides into a little pocket at the back of the book. If you were looking up a code section in the main volume of the book, you would always turn to the back of the book and look up the code section in this pocket part to see if there have been any changes 
to the wording or to see if there have been additional cases added or research aids provided by the editors. Now you might wonder, how do laws get assigned into these 51 subject areas in the U.S. Code? Let's consider how federal laws are passed. The analogy to Hawaii is not that different. The process is very similar. This is an example of a federal law that was passed in 2010, and it involves cigarette trafficking and sales over the Internet. When a bill is passed into law, it is called a session law at the federal level. At the state level, it is called a chapter law. When a federal law is first published, it's called or referred to as a slip law because it is just a slip of paper or a bunch of slips of paper. This is what you see on your screen, a slip law. A slip law has some features attached to it that you should start familiarizing yourself with because they are research aids. For example, many laws, federal and state, will have a short title or a popular name. For example, this act may be cited as the Prevent All Cigarette Trafficking Act of 2009 or the PACT Act. Laws are also assigned numbers. At the federal level, it's called a public law number. The first number you see here refers to the Congressional session which considered this law, so the 111th Congress. The second number, 154, indicates the chronological placement of the law during that session. So, this is the 154th law that was passed. Eventually, this law will be published in its permanent home. Volume 124 of the Statutes at Large on page 1087. STAT is the abbreviation for the publication Statutes at Large. What I really want to focus on is the information in this box. It reprints the short or popular name of the law, but it also tells you where this law is going to be codified. You see the bottom lines, Title 15, United States Code, Section 375. The language in this law will be added or may replace language that appears in the code. This is what Title 15, United States Code Annotated, Section 375 looks like. If you are representing a client who sells cigarettes, without a code, you would have to collect all the little slip laws over the years that make up the current version of the laws on taxing cigarettes. Instead, a code collects them and puts them all in order in one place, removing the language that's no longer relevant and containing the current language. For now, this concludes Lecture 1 for Class 4. Proceed to Lecture 2.